So he, he talks about many things, okay, but like he begins from what do you call what is the notion of magnitude actually? What's magnitude? Okay, we will know what's the magnitude of a vector. Okay, what's, what's magnitude in its essence? So again, so it's like a magnitude is an abstract term actually, it's a generic term. Okay? So if you are talking about discrete things, magnitude means quantity, it's like a number. So, you know, how many books and pens you have here actually, okay, how many chalks you have in the boxes and so on. So that's what the magnitude of thing is. Okay? So it's like a magnitude is general word, and there are different manifestations of magnitude. Let me give an analogy. Okay. For example, taste. So it's like a taste is a is a general concept actually, but the taste has different manifestations. Actually. Okay. So taste could be sweet, so salty. You can have different kind of taste. Are you getting the point? Okay. For example, um, for example, what? For example, uh, okay. Temperature. Yes, quantity. Okay. But quantities are, as we said, that we have. Uh, okay, what we got? So, scrabbled some notes. Okay. So, so temperature. So things that you can measure. Okay. Order of a set. Order of a set. Order of a set. Order of a set. It's all these are magnitudes, different manifestations. Measuring temperature. Okay. Measuring length. You know, all these speed. And all these are what we call notions of magnitude. Okay. But Riemann says that the. the, the the magnitude can be described, okay, so why need notion of magnitude? Because you want to measure thing in this abstract spaces, okay? So I want to measure things in three dimensional space, what I need. So from where I begin actually. So everything in three dimension can be understood in the terms of quantities. So I need three quantities actually. You want distances, you want, you want anything, areas and so on and so forth. You want three quantities actually. Are you getting the point? Okay. So, so if I have an abstract space and I want to have a, what do you call, um, uh, the notion of magnitude there, some notion of, obviously that, that would be um, an abstract thing in itself actually. Okay, the notion of magnitude. But you require, you require some number of quantities. Okay. For example, color actually. So why we can see different colors? Different frequencies. Why we can see colors actually? We know that three colors are the fundamental colors. Yeah. RGB. For us. Not for the birds. Yeah. You know, for us, with RGB, the fundamental, the rest are just linear combinations of all these actually. So you just, you know, combine a little bit of less red and, you know, more, what do you call, black, or, uh, blue and green, and, you know, you get different colors out of it actually. Are you getting that? Yeah. So for us, light is something which is. That, that can be understand, understood through three quantities actually, essentially. Are you getting the point? So it could be understood through three quantities. But interestingly for birds it's four. The same line. Okay? For birds it's four. Now think about it. <coughs> so, so, so when you are when you are putting, for example, you know, red light and blue light, okay, it's like so, for example, you put in yellow light and red light, what are you going to get? Orange. You're going to get orange actually. Okay? But does this orange light has any, what do you call, uh, 
its own existence at all. Is orange a color? So where does the red and yellow go? Did they convert it into the orange color? Did, did they lose their originality when they turned into the orange? The answer is no. It appears for us orange actually. Red is still red and yellow is still yellow actually. So they didn't convert. How you can vote? You just pass it through the prism and see. Again, they are going to split out actually. Are you getting the point? Okay. So, so light is white. That's it. Okay. It's we. It's that we see the different colors actually. It is because of our receptors and eye. That you see the different colors. It's it's because of the receptors that you receive the light. Okay. Are you getting the point? So, and and they create the combinations and you see the. Different colors and light. So you want to understand light, you need you need three quantities. So here's a fundamental question, the same question that I posed before, that if you have an abstract you know, space, how you can understand what we call motion of magnitude. Obviously, you need you know, a number of quantities actually. Okay, sometimes. So therefore you have this, you know, you will listen, okay. This is a two-dimensional manifold and that is a three-dimensional manifold and something like this. So, uh, you know, what we want, pointed out many, many, many interesting things. So, so, so this is just a glimpse actually to excite you so that you can read this boring stuff. <laughs> you will find it a bit boring. But you know, it's good. The true academic, uh, what do you call, you know, true, what do you call the intellectual activity is that if people are getting bored out of something and you're not both getting bored out of things, that means, you know, you are turning now, <laughs> you are getting to show. So you are getting more and more intellectual. Because there is beauty always there, actually. There is beauty always there. So you're not used to of, you know, the things that we treat dry, the things that we say, oh, these are difficult questions. Let's not think about them. Okay? They're not difficult. They are you know, good questions. They always, you know, push you to think more, think beyond. And I think, you know, the people who think beyond, what do you call, boundaries, they, you know, come up with the new things and new ideas. Are you getting the point? Anyway, so so it's it's a worthwhile thing, and you will you will. Uh, so so what what in this course we are going to do? We're not going to do too much things. What Riemann did actually, we are going to, you know, see the clever ways developed by the Gauss actually to understand. So it's it's you know if you call it it's, it's basically Gaussian geometry. Okay, but next this extension could be a Riemannian geometry. Okay, and I would like to. Uh, encourage you okay, to think about taking your career as, for example, differential geometrist because we almost have no differential geometrist in Pakistan. So there isn't anyone. So there are very few, few people who are doing different versions of geometries. Uh, maybe physics, physics people who are doing or using geometry, but not people who are experts in geometry. So it's a, it's a worthwhile. Area. So explore it. Okay. So so far, what we have learned, we've learned, you know, some algebra analysis and maybe you know some bits of applied mathematics. Okay. But this is also a course that you know that tells you that what the mathematics is all about. Actually. Okay. So okay. how you can use these very fundamental you know, things that you have learned in calculus and you know differential equations linear algebra and make sense of uh, you know pretty interesting things okay uh, but we will certainly get to some level of uh, we'll certainly touch some of the some of the you know geometry not going to leave it actually okay 
Another thing that, that he point out in, uh, in, 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 his, in this lecture, okay, he said, okay, we should have some extra abstract spaces, we should have, you know, notion of magnitude there, and we should have a tool which can measure the distances actually. Think about it. So you want to know the shape of the space. You should have some you know, pretty sophisticated tool to measure the differences. So in other words, you know, the spaces should be with their metric section. Not the metric space, you know. <laughs> you know no, metric is different, but like here the, that's a bit different notion than the metric spaces that you have learned. But then he, he also said that okay, you know, each abstract uh, space, we must know what are the meaning of this. That if, if, I, if I take a small chunk of, you know, that space, we should be able to make sense of this. Okay. So see, this all attempt of doing differential geometry, Riemannian geometry, has a purpose. Okay, so that's a purpose. Okay, it's not, and, and you will see that it's not an easy way to reach to the power. You have to define and prove theorems and do calculations and you know all these things okay so purpose is you know I want to compute what do you call so it's like you know we, we are very good at especially in South Asia we are very good at setting up purposes but we are not ready to work for that actually okay <laughs> we want to be you know the leaders in technology but we don't want to learn computing <laughs> you know what to do. <laughs> so we don't, we don't, we don't want to be learn, we don't want to learn mathematics, we don't want to, this is not going to happen. We have to, you know, learn things the way they are. Should be the way they are. Okay? So I hope enough of motivation. Okay? If enough of motivation to read this. I'll, I'll, I'll share a Google Hangout actually with you. Um, um, so there's a very young guy. You know, it's, it's pretty much interesting for me. How, how the very young people get interested in such philosophical things? You really find people here actually, you know, that, that who are interested in you know, serious things. You know, he, he, the, the guy picked up an old document and he started reading it and, you know, making sense of it and then, you know, showing to the world that, okay, what does this guy think, actually. You know. and it's, it just simply amazes me <laughs> that, you know, how, 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 how the young people, and, and it's, it's the whole hope is with the young people, actually. They have the energy, they have the potential, they have, uh, you know, the energy to, to do things and change the world. Change the state that we are in. Okay. Okay. So let's begin. Let's begin formally. Okay. Something that I am discussing now, you can read it from the chapter. Uh, okay. What essentially differential geometry is? So, for the brief, briefly, what essentially differential geometry is? Let's use calculus and differential equations to understand curves and surfaces. That's it. Okay? Let's classify them. Let's measure distances on them. Let's measure, you know, uh, Curvature. curvatures. And let's measure, you know, do all kinds of things actually that you want to do. But using only calculus. Okay? Alright. There are many ways that things can be started. Um, but let's begin by setting up things. I'll starting things with vectors.
So I hope everyone knows what is RN. And uh, I hope uh, we know that what is the meaning of being in RN. Okay, so if something is sitting inside RN, it should look like you know, this actually. Okay? So it has this. So I'm going to use the the node you know, the node rotation. So it's like it's a vector with the components uh, and components where the PIs are what they are real numbers. Okay, uh, and we know that we can add them. In other words, if I have another vector q, which is say q1 and up to qn, okay, we can add them. So it's like p plus q is going to mean that you add it some minute twice. Okay. That's like pi plus qi, where i is running from 1 to n. Okay? And we also know that I can scale it down, I can, you know, change or uh, increase the magnitude of a vector without changing its, uh, with changing its direction actually, if you multiply it with a negative number, it changes its direction, but I can scale it down. So, if you want to scale a vector, just simply multiply the scalar by, okay, with I runs form. Okay. Uh, the next thing is uh, to define so-called coordinate functions. Okay, uh, which we sometimes call what you call scalar fields. Okay. So, so imagine I have a map x i. Okay, which. Uh, takes values from R on Rn and spits them out in R, R actually. Okay. And uh, I'm going to denote, so it's like x i is going to be operated on to P and x i of P is going to be obviously a real number actually. So in other words, in other words P is mapped on the x i of yeah. Are you getting the point? Uh, for n equal to 3, I'm always going to mean that x1 is x, uh, x2 is y, and x3 is z active. Okay? So it's like x, y, z coordinate. So these are essentially what you can call these as. Uh, Uh, you can call these as these are the natural coordinates so, so if I have xi of p then xi of p is called the natural coordinates okay and you can see we all, all these things actually what we mean by CR? So CR is the uh, space of okay, smooth functions. So, it, so like, it's, it's, it's a space of functions uh, which are regular up to the order R. So it's like it's a space of functions such that real value functions obviously. Okay. Uh, such that you know, F and F prime and up to R order of derivative R are continuous activities. Okay? Sir, how did you define the map that goes from P to X? Hmm? Peter? Yeah. No, no. So, I'm saying that XI is a map which is, so it's going to have some meaning, for example. Okay. So, if I'm saying that XI, so it's like, as I said, that xi of p is, is for example p1 p2 okay, let's talk about two dimensions then xi of p is going to have some definition I mean. so it's going to be maybe p1 square plus p2 square and p1 p2 and something like that 
So we wanted to have some meat. Okay. So I hope everyone knows what is CR. So it's like a space of uh, uh, so CR. So it's like function of R class function is the space of the functions which are um, differentiable up to the order R. They are only differentiable, but they are continuous as well actually. We know it's a vector space, we have a norm on it, and you know, all these things. Okay. And how about C infinity? Okay. Okay. When I'm saying phi, phi okay. when I'm saying phi r of rn, what does it mean? It means that all these are maps, okay, uh, with the domain rn and you know with the values in r actually. Yes. And c infinity means so c infinity means. You know, we call them a space of the smooth functions actually. Okay? Smooth functions. What does that mean? It means that it's the space of the uh, functions with domain Rn and with values in R, okay, which are differentiable up to any order. You can differentiate them as much as can you want. Okay. I would like to define a notion of abstract tangent vector. Okay. And then vector field obviously. Okay. And vector field is going to be something pivotal. So but first I'm defining. So 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 first all of all of our analysis is going to be Rn actually. So in particular in R3. R2 examples we're going to do in R3 and R2, but uh, the things are going to be that we are going to discuss in Rn. Uh, Rn are, are on some part of Rn, some some kind of fold of Rn. Their own vista. They have, they have their own identity. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so they have their own identity that they want to be called. Okay. So I'm I'm giving this whole quantity a name which is X P. Okay. So whenever I'm saying I have X P, in other words, tangent vector means that I have a 